here at 7 p.m. First thing I'm going to go over is the uh, hybrid meeting. This is a hybrid public meeting. The public can attend in person or electronically. Bottom line is if you're attending electronically and you have a question or would like to be heard during audience of citizen, please raise your hand, wave at us, do something to grab our attention. We'll call on you, give us your name and address before you make your comments. Uh, if there's anybody who is disruptive or unruly in the meeting, you will be asked to leave the meeting and then I will just cut you off. Uh, we'll look at the public input for anything during the audience of citizen, and also you can write in the chat. So next, Pledge of Allegiance, please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I call this regular board, the Columbia Board of Selectmen to order at 7 p.m. Tuesday, June 21st, year 2022, at 7 p.m. Approval uh, of the agenda. Anybody have any discussion on that? I make a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, approval of the prior minutes. June 7th. June 7th, yes. Some of you may have the agenda. I move that we approve the uh, minutes of June 7th. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Next is the audience of citizens. Anybody that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, anybody in the chat? Seeing none, we know who's on tonight. Is there anybody? Uh, nobody's on chat, uh, no public input. And Wonderful. So just seeing none, let's move on the business. New business, discussion on the economic development and the economic development board. We invited Bob Elstrom back with us. We we'll missed him and we uh, respect the work that he's done and look forward to what he's gonna tell us. Well, it's good to be back. <clears throat> so that should be a different view of the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been slow. I mean, unfortunately, just so far, it's really just Bill and I have been on the commission. I've tried a couple of what I do, but the person who's probably sometime in July will be getting another person on board. So that's a positive. Um, I have spent a little time walking around through the businesses here in town, stop by and kind of get some feedback. Most people, if you read between the lines, are pretty happy to be here in Columbia. Everybody wants lower taxes, of course. Um, but I think one of the things that, that did come through, if you listened to them for a while, but they'd like more, I'm trying to think of this one back, but like in Hebrew, they do things and people get kind of promoted in town. Town, town does things, it allows them to get their name out here so people know the businesses are here. So Bill and I kind of talked about that. And, and one of the things that Columbia, Columbia doesn't have that most towns do have some sort of event. Now we have the Fourth of July parade, which is great, but it's very limited. We all walk through the parade, it's over, and everybody goes home. There's really minimal stuff. Um, Hebron has the obviously the fair, they have fireworks, they have pumpkin thing, they have maple fest. You know, they all have these things. So we like to do, at least we talked about, was having some sort of event, a yearly event. Um, one of the examples that I don't know if it's a dog show we have here in the town. I, did, I was one of the judges this year. It was really good, except there was hardly anybody there. So if we could have one event someplace where we could have some multiple things going on, I thought the rent was one of the best assets in town. It's beautiful. And with Bill and I were thought of one example I'm throwing out to you guys it would be a triathlon. In town, we've got we have a lake, we have roads, we have the airline trail. I mean, I didn't, this is very, you know, very preliminary. I haven't talked to anybody. One of the things I would like to do is if the board thinks it's a good, okay idea when I talk to other people here in town, businesses and stuff, 
I can suggest them. And like I, fireworks, when I still own my business, I would buy a little pucker and the fireworks in Hebron, you know, sponsored for the sponsors, whether we had something like that. Um, or food trucks from local vendors or um, anything, you know, something that someone would like to do and can showcase themselves at an event where they can get enough people here in town. Maybe some people out of town, which was the thought of the triathlon. Um, Bill knew a little bit about this organization to do that. I don't know if it seems feasible, but I thought it, makes, it would make sense to talk to the board first before I start talking to people that it's a possibility. It doesn't have to be a triathlon. That was something I came up with. I'd be open to any suggestions, but that seems like it would be, I don't think there's anything like that in this part of the state. If we do a good one, it might be something to drop into. So I'm just looking for feedback and Bill, if you got anything you want to add to that. Well, as far as that, you know, the Hartford Marathon Foundation has uh, sponsored a number of us. I know they were doing things in Glastonbury when they were doing a biathlon years ago. So I don't know whether some kind of organization that has the skill to set up all the uh, you know, things you need as far as timing and everything else to, to help you run it. Uh, but at least to, I would like to at least explore that. I think it would be a nice thing to have an annual thing at a time. I know we have the other race that the uh, rec department sponsors, but mm -hmm. it would be nice to do something in addition to that. So again, it's, uh, I have no date in mind, so I'm not, this isn't for this year. Yeah, no, this I think, actually, year, this I think it's a great year. idea. And mm -hmm. it'll take some time to put it together. Uh, I actually um, threw something out a year ago. We talked to Mark Rosal about it. Is uh, between from Bolton to here, doing a triathlon with start off on your bike in Andover. You drop the bike and you run down to a portion down here, and you get a kayak and you kayak down to the main moose area. Where everybody finishes. I talked to the first selectman, Pam Sawyer, and she's uh, you know open to the idea. It's an idea. I like your idea. The other thing that I've seen is things called uh, Spartan Spartan runs, where there's obstacles. Uh, kids do it. I know they've done it at the school, um, but you can do them for adults and stuff, and it only has to be a few things or a dozen things in a five mile trek. We could have historical scavenger hunts type of thing, find this location. I think they're great ideas. So thank you for bringing it up. I think if we brainstorm and uh, you know talk about things, we can come up with something that's, that's, that's good. So I look forward to it. Um, when do you meet? When did you meet? Did you, well, you met with the May, the May meeting, anyways. I, I was in the for June's meeting, so I met in May. Okay. Um, that's one of the first things we should do is promote that, the Economic Development Committee, to do things. So we'll help you there. I'd like to sit in. Too many ideas running through his head. It's ridiculous. Um, but you're right. We put a lot of money into Rec Park. Rec Park looks great. I don't want to wreck it by doing obstacle courses all over the place, but certainly it is going to be a place where you can start or end festivities and yeah, there's general you know, That's where you have the food trucks and games yep. for kids. On August 6th, we have we're going to have a, a townwide picnic up at Rec Park for a ribbon cutting of the new um, pavilion up there. We talked about it, trying to get it for the 4th of July. I was told it was too ambitious. It's not rec park. The pavilion may be done and usable, but they couldn't put it together to have it really. So I think we're looking at August 6th. We're starting to put the final touches on that. So certainly, and I commend you for getting out and talking to the business people to find out. Um, we do our best with the taxes. <laughs> but they, uh, they, they say half jokingly. I mean, yeah. You know, I think they know. They we're, know. Yeah, I get it. But really to help promote their businesses. And Mark and I have blown the dust off of the Route 6 upgrade of the corridor, the study that was done years ago. And uh, we're looking at that again because the layout of it all happens down there on the north side of Columbia and it opens up a whole new business district along Route 6. So it would be in conjunction with 
Bolton and over a little bit of Coventry and Columbia would benefit highly for that. And it would be on one side of the town. We would have our, you know, rural country, beautiful farm area on this side it would be sliced out over there would help. Uh, I talked to Howard a lot at the plaza down there. He's the owner. He has asked if we could put up a board down there. Uh, you are entering the shopping corridor or something, Columbia Willimantic shopping corridor to help certainly promote his business. But as you look down there, there are businesses that are that would benefit also from it. So um, there's a lot of ideas out there. So it would be not be nice because as you can see, he's put some he's put his money in the pockets right now. Clean that up really nice. Yeah, looks. You know, I did the original the original work before I started doing anything. It's just amazing. It looks a lot better. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, so. There's a lot of things being thrown out there. My father says, you know, you throw it up against the wall, some of it actually sticks. And so, uh, you know, again, I commend you for, you know, spearheading this. Let's let's get involved. Let's put some stuff together. Let's really really do some things. I'm all for it. And I know a lot of people in town are. So what's our next step? Can I give a suggestion? <clears throat> if there's, no, I won't mention that. If economic development can go to either the Lions or the Historical Society, it's usually the organizations that run these events, yep. like the Historical Society was the one running that um, dog, dog show. Yeah. And it was the Lions that do the Fort July Parade. Um, well, I think to pull off this, I'm trying to think big. To pull this off, you're gonna to have to have everybody on board. So local businesses, just for any any group in town that, that does things would have to be on board. And, and that, that's the only way it'll work because that's the only way you get the word out to people. There's no one group. I mean, that's the problem. The historical society has a dog show. Everybody involved with the historical society shows up, but it's hard to get anything. Right. I'm not downplaying it was fun and we had a good time, but it was uh, it was a really good event. It's too bad more people didn't see it. That kind of thing. Right. So, unfortunately, there's a lot of a lot of events doesn't get enough either publicity or participants or bystanders to watch it. I mean, you know, we had the uh, we had the vintage baseball team for a while. Um, People went up there and played, and there was you know 20 people watching, yeah. and it was a good time. But you can add on to those things, like bring up food trucks and you know have things for the kids, and it would make it more of an event, a town-wide event, an event for people to yeah, the group. Okay. Give something for each group, right? To go to, and then they see the other. They have a reason to go. A bigger event, and like you go, you go to the Hebrew Fair. There's multiple little things going on. I'm just talking about the the rides, but there's like the pig races and tractor pulls and all this stuff. I'm not saying you should do that. No, I mean, you, no. we have different things going on that are appropriate for our town, our, our park. Right. Have a pickle, a pickle football tournament or something. I don't know. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So I actually talked to uh, the winery uh, about clearing some of that field below, the, and, and he said, and when I was talking to him, I said, you know, you, you have a great section there, just carve it out of the side here. You can take a little bit to flatten it out, plant some nice, plant a nice field there. And I said, you could have cornhole tournaments every weekend or volleyball tournaments or um, croquet, you know, old time croquet type events. And, and people would come to those things. And he then said to me, I, I really, I, I want to put like a soccer field there. Great, and you can use it as a multi-purpose field. So there's people who have ideas and they'd like to see it happen. It's just going to take, you know, a real um, driving force to get it done. So again, I, I'm let's, let's keep going. So years ago, he ran the PTO. Sometimes they did a. They used to sponsor a um, business thing, a business fair. That's what it was with all the local businesses. And then they would, you know, the kids would sell cookies or whatever. And so everybody, the PTO actually did it and used the school. Nice place for people. It was indoors. They had a big enough facility for people to go in and set up a little booth indoors. It's a nice winter thing. And on that, I mean, I was looking at there because somebody made a comment about something on everything Columbia. But 
that not a day goes by, somebody's looking for a recommendation on somebody to do something for them paid in Colombia. I need somebody to hang two doors and do this. Just thought, I can anybody recommend this? Anybody recommend that? We should be able to tell the businesses in Colombia. And I think having something like that is probably an excellent idea. You know, that's what I, I used to do. Yeah. So we have a lot of businesses in town. You get the list, it's surprising. There's a lot of people here. Yeah. Well, and you can even get out of town. There's that do a lot of contractors who do a lot of work in town. So, All right. so this August 6th thing, that might be, I don't know when you want to hold it, but that might be a good experiment to see how long well that's people come to that. Right now it's 12 to 2. We'll, we'll get all the cooking going before yeah. that. Yeah, to three to see, to see how if that, if that becomes like a time slot that people think of that might if we plan something next year that might be a time slot to try to yeah you know create our spot yeah because there's so much going on every time we have their thing mm -hmm. i just want to i just think it's time to call me out there thing disrespect to the fourth of july foot trade i love it but it's it's a little it doesn't last long it doesn't have that yeah, it's an hour and it's two hours and then you know, Everybody just goes, hey, great, boom, and they're gone. They scatter, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. Nobody wants to work on that day, and if we did an event after, people would be working on that day. <laughs> they would, but we have five of us here that would work. I know that, and uh, people from East Haddon would love to come and work it. <laughs> I'd be there. <laughs> about it all the time. Uh, listen, I mean, I. I I can shame a few people to volunteer. It's a great community. Not coming. <laughs> She's it's pretty kidding me. She's the, uh, the pavilion, you know, breeder. Uh, so um, now, so, so I hear correctly, we would like to pursue this and see where we can go. Yeah, absolutely. Get some ideas. Work on the ones you have. Whatever you want to do, Rob. Please. And um, you know, if you need something from here, we'll work it out. I think that's a great idea. We actually do more things if you want to stick around. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Okay. Anybody, I'm sorry, anybody else question for Rob? Good? Perfect. All right, have a, have a good evening. No, Rob. That's one of the advantages of not being on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next, we have a motorcycle cherry ride, uh, David Zelaya uh, for American Legion. Is that what it's American Legion folks 197. Asked to be able to use part of Columbia for, Columbia for a motorcycle cherry ride. What do we have on that? Are you okay? Um, it's on July 10th, so I just need that as a motion to authorize the, from Marlboro to the American Legion post 13 birth. Traveling through Columbia on July 10th. All right, so I move to approve a motorcycle charity ride from the American Legion Post 197 in Marlboro to the American Legion Post 14 in Vernon, and they will travel through Columbia on July 10th, 2022. Do we have a time that's happening? The party at 1130 in Marlboro. So. 930 Marlboro? Yeah. No, 1130. Okay. These, these motorcycle rides are they're allowed. It's also 12 so, 30. It's, yeah. it's going to be quarter, quarter of 12 to 12. It's going to be noisy. What, the, um, what is July 10th? Is it a Sunday? 4th of July is a Sunday. Okay, you know, that's not really good. Um, yeah, but where do they go through Columbia? Well, right down down right down 66. 66. And church? How many motorcycles? I guess you don't know. Um, tell tell Father they have the gas mask. Have what? Tell Father they have the gas mask. You've been over there lately? Nothing fast over there now. It's, it's good. It's very meaningful. Get the right back on. Um, Just one. It's going to get noisy out. So that's church. You know what? Why don't I tell them that they have the I always ask them to postpone a half, 15 minutes. All you need is 15 minutes. You don't want to tell them not to do it. 
Yeah. So you leave them over at 1130? Yeah. All right, I'll tell them they're rolling through here at 1140, so we'll move quickly. Ask Ben to pick up the pace a little bit. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Can the chapter keep the light open? Does that have the door versus sitting there idling? Well, that's the other thing. They're having the escort. Yeah, they should have them. Yeah, they should probably will. Work on that. Any other discussion? Just the all those in favor. Aye. Opposed? Uh, oh, get a hold of the bottom line. Okay. Let's give him a heads up. What? Just call him. Yeah, heads up. What were you going to say? Um, Seven point three congregational church. Yeah. Just real quick. Um, congregational church <laughs> parsonage tax abatement. So. Um, what happened was the parsonage was being rented, but it wasn't being used as a parsonage, so it was taxable. So when the grand list hit on October 1st of 2021, it was a taxable item. So the assessor thought that the board of selectmen could abate the tax now that a minister's moved in and it's back being a non-taxable parsonage. Mm -hmm. But after further review, they would have had to appeal it to a board of assessor appeals. This didn't happen until after board of assessor appeals, so that window is shot. So basically, it has to stay on the tax rolls. It'll automatically be tax exempt at the next um, tax year. Unfortunately, unless we had an ordinance, the board of selectmen cannot prorate a tax uh, without a board of assessor appeal or without it being a refund. Request from the tax collector. But they can go through an appeal. But they can, but it's too late. There. Right. Yeah. The refund? You we can't because this just happened. I just had another conference call on this. Huh. And due to the timing, we can't do it. So I don't have a I don't have a way out at the moment. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any questions? So, what does it mean? Right, right now, I have to pay the tax. Is this like an uncommon? It, it's timing. You know, when you when you bouncing back and forth, thinking of property taxable and non-taxable, it all depends on when it happens. That's key when we set. Yeah, because next year, if the if the pastor moves out the day after this is set. And we don't tax it for a year, right? Right. right. So right. it's on October first. October first is the key. That's what yeah. sets and then the you grand have, list. And you have very finite time. And then you to have appeal. a time period to appeal. Like the church could have said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's, we're moving a pastor in there," but they missed board of assessment rules. Right. Seven four recreation park mm -hmm. recreational uh, rec park celebration August sixth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, amend that to um, like 11 to 2. Sure. So if we have a lot of people. Two o'clock, two hours is going to go by quick. Yeah. And the people there, you know, asking for the hot dog. Like, uh, what, what day is that? I believe it's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Monday. August 6th is a Saturday. Is there a rain day? I would imagine Sunday. And we will be looking for volunteers to help out. Uh, is that something we need to vote on? Because it's going to cost money? There will be some, but we will use, we'll find funds. Yeah, we have more funds, right? Not, right. Yeah, so not. do we have to vote on it or what? You want the support of the board second? So motion. I think a motion we have the celebration at Rec Park on August 6th from 11 to 2. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Columbia Lake, nothing. Um, no. Okay, you're up. Oh, appointments and resignations. So, I move to appoint Beth Lunt as tree warden for the town of Columbia. Why did that move? Um, our tree warden just uh, left to go work with Wyndham. Was he primary? Yes. And uh, Andy is still our tree warden, our, our foreman. And Beth is already a trained tree warden. So she does not have to do the classes. Is she picking up the stipend for that, Mark? No. 
Part of it. So should so, we? So Chris, okay. So Andy's going to be our primary. I, I don't know how that matter. Matter. We'll whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll work, work it together. Okay. Any questions? Discussion. You don't need to be an arborist to license her. There's she has her certification. She okay. took all the training to be a few Okay. But it's not, you don't need to be an arborist. It's a different qualification. Arborist is a long time. Right. <laughs> all right. Was but the, the course is intensive. It's not an easy course to pass. Oh, I, I took the Connecticut Nursery Indians course years ago. I get it. Yeah. But it's still not an arborist. Correct. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And if they, if they had a serious question, they would bring in an arborist if they wanted to back up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to say that one of our new hires uh, six months ago, Fred Ben Narsky. Ben Narsky. Okay. So completed a six month probation period. So I moved to approve Fred. Narski from the six month probation place now as a full time employee. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have a town administrator's report? Yes. Um, I just wanted to, we talked about this last two weeks ago. This is a revised billboard that Katie is uh, recommending to use the SARNAC funds to put up to highlight that vaping is high demand. I think everybody had a copy. There's one sitting on your under the TA report tag. Uh, the first, it's a lot. It's I like it. It's we calmed it down from the last one. The last one was trying to tell too much, uh, so this one's simpler. And they're just trying. So to in my ignorance, that brand. Equals 40 cigarettes. That one is. It's actually not, it's a, not a brand, brand. It's, it's a device. The size of the device. And the previous one showed them sideways. So you could tell the one on the left was thin, and the one in the middle was medium, and the one on the right was super fat. But I think they went vertical because now they're sh showing all the cigarettes, each one equals. But the main point is that there's nicotine in all pod disposable vape devices. Okay. Wanting to change this time. She's got, she's got a, she has a deadline. It'll be, I think, up near the main news on, on 66 East. Good. Okay. Uh, Facing if you're coming back to like four minutes. I'm not sure which way it goes. I think, right? That's it's, well, there is a there is a billboard um, prior to both, on both sides, so I don't, right. know, I don't know which one it is. Um, I also want to show you all uh, something I use with Stephen uh, to keep track of all the projects that are nonstop. We do a um, a weekly project list and status and where we are. So I just wanted to let you get a feel for what type of things are constantly being worked on in the town. I don't normally send it to the whole board, but um, if you want it, you're welcome to it. But in, in, in lieu of the conversation last week, I asked Mark to start sending it. So we know what's going on. If you have questions, you I think that'd be helpful. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so then you'll be able to see what's going on at Red Park and what are the status is. All right. yeah. So you should be getting it started now. Okay. What bids we're working on, what big projects. Um, one thing I'll give you a heads up on some pretty interesting meetings went on last week. We had the uh, Salmon River Watershed Partnership meeting to develop a five year action plan. And what they were talking a lot about was the Eight Mile River watershed. <clears throat> but Eight Mile River is federally endorsed as a wild and scenic river, which means it receives federal money to the tune of about 200000 a year that they use to hire a full-time watershed manager. Uh, the, the Salmon River watershed is lucky. We get to use this manager one day a week. Can you see a picture? That was a while ago. Um, 
And it was interesting, they went over a lot of things that the watershed works on. And it's, it's a lot more than you would think. Um, it's a lot of research, a lot of study of the water quality. They tie in with the universities and the kids help with that research. Um, and what they're looking for is how to get more money to fund the Sam River watershed since it doesn't have the federal designation that the Eight Mile watershed does. And one thing they were talking about was a per diem fee per pound based on, I mean, per capita fee per pound. But they, they didn't come up with anything concrete. Uh, it was just kind of a, a start of how do, we, how do we get more money to do more things in the Sam River watershed. And, I, I can and what kind of more things would you want to do? They want to do more analysis of the water quality, especially, I know, um, Back when this started, they had grants to do inflow analysis of all or outflow from every drain in every town draining in that watershed. So they mapped all the outflows of every town with GPS and a team. So you knew you had outflows coming from all these streets hitting the watershed as a drain. A lot of these drains were put in 40 years ago and they just drained somewhere into the woods. Uh, but right now they're having a lot of problems in Coventry. Uh, the salt, they're having wells that are getting contaminated by salt. And they're debating DP. I thought the new salt was supposed to stop. Well, they don't, they're, they're researching it now. DEP says the second there's salt in a well, it's the town's fault. It obviously came from the road. The towns are saying, well, a lot of people don't have proper disposal of their water softening system, oh, which funny. dumps salt right into the ground if you don't have it captured in a specific septic system, separate from your normal septic system. Hmm. And I bet a lot of people dump it straight into their septic of system. They do. So all that research is what they talk about in these watershed meetings, and they're they're more scientific than but they look for volunteers from the towns to do a lot of their cleanup of the rivers. Um, they'll have cleanup My days. My problem is money on federal stuff always comes with springs. Well, and here's the problem. The Sam River is not federal funded. All right. This so that's, is locally that's, funded. That's not a problem. <laughs> so that, My. that's just something that started. And then the other cool meeting we had, um, Ann went to it, uh, Beth Lunt, a public director, myself and Tom, um, McGrath was the Hop River Trail Alliance meeting. So we had our first meeting to ally Wyndham, Columbia, Andover, Coventry, Bolton, Vernon, and Manchester because we all ordered the Hop River walking trail. And what they're saying is that walking trails are an economic engine for towns. When you have great walking trails that people can actually commute on. Some people actually go shopping. They get on the bike and go into Wyndham and get their farmer's market stuff every week. And they said it's almost a spiritual ride through the trail. And we're only two things left, the main moose bridge and then the Hop River Bridge and um, those uh, road bridge. But we get those done and you'll have, you'll have a really nice route that most states don't have. We have the airline trail and the Hopper Trail. And this is, Hopper Trail is part of the entire green line. But this was an organizational meeting to try to coordinate maintenance of the trail because DEEP does not have any money to maintain the trails. They don't even have any people left. It's a skeleton crew. Um, so we met um, David Buckley. He's the DEEP coordinator that we had to work with. And um, we're going to organize our public works crews into trying to help do maintenance on these trails. And the Lebanon does lion's lion's share of the airline trail maintenance because it mostly goes through their tax. But the Hopper River Trail, uh, big chunk of it goes through Columbia. So those are kind of things I'll, I'll keep you all abreast of what's happening and what needs there are out there. And uh, how we can get volunteer groups together. Yeah. Um, can we just make sure? No. Okay. Uh, some nice correspondence in there.
So it's there for you to read. If you haven't seen it, you don't get the crackle. It's in there, but the question I would ask is, my goodness, why don't you get the crackle? Never mind. All right, uh, budget. We have some transfers. Move to approve the transfers presenting a total of $9,975. It's the end of the year. It's uh, basically from one part of each department over to the same department, but a different area to keep track of where we spend the money. Uh, we have the money, so. Is everybody doing all the different departments doing okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we just had some uh, equipment. Uh, maintenance that popped up on us. That's yeah, the big, the big tickets are, uh, you know, a truck here, needs some supplies, and air, air conditioning here, whatever it is. There is some uh, description on each one of these in there. Price of candy went up. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yes. Any, uh, Stretch any questions? Those in favor of the transfers? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Refund. We have a refund. Make a motion we approve the refund in the amount of sixty dollars and thirteen cents. Mm -hmm. Pay tax. <clears throat> it's adjusted for interest. I didn't hear what you said. Is it? A, it was adjusted for interest, correct? Yeah. Any uh, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> bills. Make a motion to pay bills in the amount of forty thousand nine hundred thirty-six dollars and eighty-nine cents, consisting of twenty-one twenty-two regular credit card paychecks. Uh, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And doors on the garage up there. Yeah, they're up there. The first payment to the environmental group for the lake. Doing a bunch of little maintenance stuff around town. Mm -hmm. Realize the price of the uh, electricity for the, for the lights, street lights. Street lights. Very expensive. Yeah, that's why when concern says it came to me wanted a street light. We took one off of one pole, moved it to another because it was a street had closed out and we didn't need it there. So in that some people are actually being built for street line don't know because they requested years ago yeah. it's on their town because it's not oh, no. needed for the town yeah. so it's on your bill any discussion all those in favor all right all right okay. of citizens participants Oh, that's just me. I decided. Anybody else? Three new people or no? Two new people. Really one new person. Just here visiting? Yeah, I'm just here to watch out with the proceedings and whatnot. Okay. Anything? No one did. Very good. Seeing none, then uh, any board member comments before we ask the citizens to Park. I do have one. Yeah. So the Beaver Pond saga between Pine Street and Hunt Road. I've watched this silliness since they first started trying to get rid of the beavers. And they every time, so now what's happening is you have the original dam and you had maybe this much little wetlands. You could walk up those. Are you talking about off, off 66? Off of 66. Yeah. So now they so that I forget her name, who the town manager was here for you. Natasha. Natasha had gone and told them, you gotta get rid of the beavers, they're going to flood the roads. So they they breached the beaver dam 
and nothing. And so now what happens is the beavers have felt threatened. They built that back and forth. Now they, they, they never used to do the culvert. They never used to plug up the culvert. They built a dam on the outside. So now every time they unplug the culvert, a whole bunch of the soil between beaver dam, the proper beaver dam, and the road is eroding away. So now instead of being this deep, it's like three feet deep. It's just eroded all out. And I'm sitting there going, why don't they just fill that up and leave just this little bitty culvert where leaders aren't going to fail to back up? Just a thought, if you could, because it's becoming a problem now. And they will be doing that twice a year. They're doing it twice a year. You're saying the state is opening it up. The state year. opened it up, what, last week, the week before? And I can't believe how much soil went into the lower beaver line. It just eroded away. There's now this big old gorge. And I don't see why they don't just fill it up. Just oh, go take a walk. I used to walk there because I used to, they used to have, I don't know. <laughs> they walk, see the girls. See the, yeah. So, okay. Might be worth talking to the before it starts flooding. A few weeks ago, I took the uh, uh, Marine Patrol tour uh, with John, who's a uh, fairly new uh, member of the uh, Marine Patrol. It was a uh, very interested in the uh, past maybe a couple hours, so just go around a couple hours and just form, navigating around the, uh, you know, the, you know, the perimeter of the lake. It was very interesting. You know, John's a really nice guy, and seeing you know, the lake and just all the different aspects of it. Yeah, saw the eagles' nest, it was great. So, sleepy Hollow. Is that Sleepy Hollow? Yeah, yeah, Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. And, and just one question so the uh, Erdoni Road sign. Whatever came about up there. See. Yep, we're putting up two new no parking signs. There were three on the one side of the street, but someone had taken them off on the lake side of the street. So the need for that. <laughs> it's funny because after that meeting, a few days later, I got something saying that a truck or something was, and a few people were seen hoisting a boat over. <laughs> And it was an hour to go into the lake. And I was notified until you know a day later, so it doesn't really help. Uh, anybody all set? Wonderful. So at this time I'm going to suspend the board of selectmen meeting and move into executive session. And I would ask that Mark uh, go with us, everybody else. Thank you very much. We're going into executive session at 7.43 to discuss personnel and real estate. Okay, it's uh, 8.40 and we are coming out of executive session and uh, no further action needs to be taken on items discussed. So we will resume the board selectmen meeting and I make a motion. We adjourn at 8.41. All those in favor? Thank you.